Hey it's Tim Leeds, it's Daily here with another speed build and today's speed build is very exciting because it is my dream home, uh, which has been requested quite a bit recently so I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it, I'm going to try it out, this will be fun, this will be easy, it'll be quick because I know exactly what I want, but boy oh boy was I wrong. Uh, <laughs> You know what, this has got to have been one of the most difficult builds ever because I didn't realize, even though I know what I love, I had to narrow that down to kind of suit one household. So, like, it, because I love so many different styles of housing and interiors, uh, it could all kind of be put all together in one house and it would look really higgledy-piggledy and overly mismatched and it would just be like a hot a hot, hot mess. So uh, it was difficult for me to narrow down the styles of things I liked to, into one home, I guess. So anyway, the overall style of this house uh, turns out to be a modern home, but it, it is also quite homely. So it's contemporary, but homely at the same time. Although in this start of the build or the first exterior we do, it actually looks a little bit too modern in my opinion. Like for my personal taste, even though I loved it, if there was an, if <laughs> I'm mumbling my words or jumbling them, uh, if this was a normal house build, I probably would have kept it how it was. But you know, in the end, because it's for me, because it's my dream home and that's what it's meant to represent, uh, it changes quite a bit. So you will see exterior one, and then you'll see it completely change to exterior two uh, in terms of wallpaper, which is quite funny. But right now I wanted an outdoor living area. So I kind of got straight in and created this kind of outdoor fireplace area where I wanted to have exposed wooden logs because of pretty much all the houses I've been to where they have open fires. Uh, I don't actually have one in this house, but in my old house I used to have an open fireplace, which I adore. Uh, there is always, you know, exposed wood logs next to the fire, and I feel like The Sims have only got a couple of little kind of wood carriers, and I wanted lots of wood and generous amount of wood. So that is why I'm creating that section at the back. Uh, here we are. We are about to use some constrained floor elevation cheat to change the size of the wall. Uh, because there is a little bit of split leveling in this home. Uh, there is a sunken kitchen, which I thought was pretty cool. And there is also a sunken master bedroom, uh, which is also pretty cool also. And definitely we could not leave out or go without an amazing walk-in wardrobe. So that is going to be included as well. And like usual, there'll be two parts of this build. There is going to be this build half and then the second video, which will be uploaded tomorrow, uh, that's going to be the finishing half. So you guys can check that out as well. Uh, the thing is, I could edit down the videos into one video, but it wouldn't show the entire build or two, it would be really, 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 really fast and probably too fast to take in because this is already fast enough. Uh, so that is why there is two videos, if you are wondering, uh, for these longer, longer builds. I also did the interior twice, pretty much. Uh, I mean, when I say twice, I, I kind of like half did it the first time and deleted it and then redid it. So I've only shown the second interior because the first one was just... It was just woeful. I don't even want to talk about it, to be honest, because it's just sometimes you just can't just get it right. <laughs> so I took a breather and came back and redid it. So I'm really happy with how it turned out in the end. Uh, but anyway, we've got one split level there uh, on the roof. Actually, we've got two split levels. So we've got the kind of foundation split level. And I know some of you guys sometimes wonder, why wouldn't you just use a foundation tool? But I wasn't quite sure where all of the, the sunken rooms were going to be exactly. So to make sure that I had complete control over that and I didn't have to go back and delete foundation and then make more kind of split levels, I do it for the whole floor plan from the beginning so I can, you know, kind of mold it to whatever I want it to be. Uh, so yeah, the, the thing is with this house, because it is, I, I am naturally attracted to kind of boxy contemporary homes. I love, you know, straight lines, clean lines and, uh, clean planes. That's just my personal taste. Uh, but it's kind of hard in the Sims to make boxes look good. Sometimes there's just no life in them. So 
I, I think in real life it's almost easier to make a box look good, <laughs> but in The Sims it's harder. So I'm adding a lot of these kind of uh, straight, repetitive, patterned walls, uh, line of the wall tool, lines of the wall tool, basically. I'm going to call it maybe... Oh, strips of wall. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Uh, but the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanted to avoid it looking too boxy. I wanted it to look like, I don't know. So it had a bit of a dynamic essence to it, I suppose, in the architecture. So that's why I'm putting in lots of those. And boy, oh boy, do we go to town with them. Uh, you, you're only just seeing the start. We're going to have a lot more of those uh, coming up soon. <laughs> uh, so that's going to be changing a lot. But I love this fireplace. We're seeing the back of it right now. Uh, you know, the reason why I kind of put that extra split level on the roof there was so I could cut out sections of the wall to expose those logs and hide the rest of them. Kind of like it looks like storage. Uh, so you could go into the forest and chop those trees down and then bring them back. Uh, so you had like a whole winter stock. Uh, sitting there. <laughs> um, but yeah, this house is also very much inspired by my auntie and uncle's house uh, because it is a house that I remember from, well, really since I can remember, uh, because my parents uh, divorced. We moved houses from my childhood home, so I haven't had the luxury that some of you guys might have of having lived in the one house your whole life or that your parents have lived in that one house uh, since you were very little and you know when you when you go back home or to those homes you feel this kind of sense of nostalgia and it, it's really beautiful to go back to a home you've known for years and years uh, so that's why I love my auntie and uncle's house so much because even though I've moved houses a few times uh, so I don't have my own home I don't have that nostalgic feeling for my own place I get that when I go to their house because I've known it since I was a child so I guess my dream home wants to reflect that I want to reflect things around, <laughs> that were in my childhood because there's something magical about memories from your childhood uh, and that's what makes this dream home quite homely for me so one of the things that they do have in their house one of the characteristics is that it's uh, partly limestone uh, like a white limestone. So in the end, even though at the beginning when we first do the, or we initially do the wallpaper on this house, uh, it's kind of gray to begin with. I do change it to the limestone in the end. And we also have a lot of timber detailing because that's another thing I love, uh, which you guys can probably tell from my other builds. <laughs> in terms of the world that we're in, uh, I do live near the coast, but I grew up in a very foresty area I suppose a very bushy area where there are a lot of gum trees and uh, greenery so I started actually building in Isla Paradiso and I looked a lot into sunlit tides and I looked at uh, roaring heights as well because I thought you know I'm gonna do a beach house because I love the beach uh, but then I was like you know what it's really important for me to have water near my house in my dream home uh, but at the same time, it's really important for me to have not just palm trees, but I want lots of greenery, like foresty trees around it. Because uh, that's what I remember when I was a kid. So I guess <laughs> that's why I chose Hidden Springs to build this in. Because we've got the water in the background. I know it's more kind of a lakey type of water or rivery water. Uh, but I kind of imagine that that would be connected to the ocean nearby. And uh, that's that's my dream, to live near the ocean, but at the same time to have the beautiful greenery around my home. That is the dream. Uh, but I would love to hear about what your dream homes are in the comments down below. I find it so interesting. One of my favorite dinner table conversation starters is, what would your dream house look like? Of course, I don't like go to people's houses and ask that randomly, <laughs> just to make that clear. But I do love asking people that because it is fascinating. Uh, so let me know, do you guys want to live in a mansion? Do you guys want to live uh, in kind of a beach shack? Or do you want to live in a high rise, lofty apartment that's really industrial looking? I would love to hear. And especially because, you know, you viewers are from all over the world. Uh, you would bring something very different to the table in terms of what tastes you have because uh, you've grown up around different things to what I have. So in Australia, there are a lot of contemporary homes, uh, modern homes. We, because we're kind of a newer uh, place, we, we don't have the old historical buildings that 
places in Europe have uh, for you guys in Europe. You know, we don't kind of have that history. So a lot of our houses are a bit, I don't know, contemporary. They're, they don't have a lot of pillars and whatnot uh, that I've seen when I've been traveling, which have, you know, really impressed me overseas, particularly in Europe. I loved going to Italy and seeing the architecture there. It was so beautiful. When I was in Rome, there was so much kind of greenery growing over these ancient buildings. It was just insane. And uh, in this house, we do put a lot of greenery on the roof, kind of growing across the building. Uh, I, I really love that. So I definitely want to put that in there. That is very inspired by Rome. Uh, it's also inspired by my auntie's house as well, because they have a whole heap of flowers growing across their house too. Um, but yeah, I'd love to hear that. It's funny because there's a few other Simmers in the community making dream houses as well. Uh, Caitlin Sims, uh, who's another Australian Simmer. She's hilarious. You have to check out her channel. Uh, she Shout out to Caitlin. Uh, she just made her dream house, which, which was like this epic mansion. Uh, it was so cool. I loved it. It was featured on the Sims 3 website which is pretty rad. And uh, that's very different to this. Um, also, Meg Loves Games, a uh, good Simmer friend of mine. She also just built her dream home. And that, compared to Caitlin, was a lot uh, smaller and a bit more quainter. And it had lots of bookshelves, lots of like tall double bookshelves, which was really cool. I really liked that. And she kind of had... Uh, <laughs> she had a lot of noodles, to be honest, a, a lot of noodles because she does like her noodles. So that was really interesting to watch as well. And I think uh, Mouse, who is another Australian simmer slash builder from Tasmania in Australia, another fellow Aussie, I was talking to her too, and she's currently building her dream home as well. So I'm very interested to see what that would be like too. Because uh, everyone is so different. But yeah, just building more here. We're doing the wallpaper. And you can see it's looking very, very, very modern. You know, we've got that contrast of the light gray concrete against that really rich, browny, ready timber wood. And, you know, I really liked it. But at the same time, I feel like it is very masculine looking. It's almost a little bit... I mean, the wood makes it warmer. It is, in a way, homely. But for me, it just wasn't homely enough. It's just still a little bit too much stark modernist. I don't know. Uh, it just wasn't enough for me. But anyway, this is still pretty cool. If I was doing this as a normal build, I would have totally kept this because it's rad. But uh, for my dream home, it needed to be softened up just a little bit. <laughs> and you can see we've added a lot of those kind of lines, uh, wall lines. <laughs> Wall lines, I really don't know what they're called. Uh, someone comment what that detail on a house is called because I'm struggling here <laughs> describing it. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're kind of making them uh, timber as well here because on that outdoor area, I wanted to have some kind of ceiling over it, but I didn't want it to be completely blocked from the outside air. So I didn't want it completely covered. Uh, so... That's why it's kind of got those gaps between it. And I also, in the back of my mind, was thinking I really wanted to use those hanging chairs from the Bohemian Garden set from the Sims 3 store. So I I uh, kind of had that in mind as well when I was making those long kind of wooden lines of wall. Lines of wall. I really need a better descriptive word for that. Uh, and yeah, here we are putting all the plants up. I'm pretty sure that plant is from World Adventures. I think so, but don't quote me on it because I have been known to get these things wrong <laughs> quite regularly. Uh, so that, that is, I think, where that's from. And of course, I think the plant that's being put onto the roof right now, I'm pretty sure that is from the base game. Uh, and I know another kind of it came potentially with, oh, potentially with, I think, I think The Sims 3 Ambitions, maybe, maybe it could have. But anyway, that's a different one. That doesn't have purple flowers. I think it has more whitey, orangey flowers from memory. Uh, but anyway, as you can see here, we've got the high double ceiling. I've always loved homes with really high ceilings. If this house, if, if I was able to build my dream house in real life, to be honest, it would be really quite different because there are obviously limitations in The Sims. Uh, one big limitation is you can't really have 
thick exposed beams in The Sims 3. It's just not something that you can really do. I know you can use fencing to create beams, but it's just a little bit hard. Uh, so that is one thing that would be in my real in my real life dream house would be big, thick, exposed beams across a high ceiling because I love that uh, with like a chandelier hanging down. That would be quite nice. <laughs> uh, and also another thing would be uh, I do like I do like kind of, I guess, houses that have not just like flat ceilings. I love houses which have kind of angled ceilings as well. If you get my drift. Uh, so that's something else I would like in real life. And of course, a range hood would be really nice in the kitchen. Uh, and I'm so excited that range hoods are in The Sims 4. I am keen as a bean. You know, no, no, no. I am keen as a baked bean, which is so much more than a bean. That is way more keen. Uh, keen as a baked bean for Sims 4. I cannot wait. Uh, those, you know, those new... Uh, screenshots or renders that they just released. Uh, May the 4th be with you. <laughs> I, I did not actually get the Star Wars reference until you guys commented on that video uh, that I had a little bit of a chat about what I thought about it. I didn't realize it was a Star Wars reference. Uh, I know some of you guys are totally going to be very disappointed to hear, but I think I've only watched like the first half of the first Star Wars movie. I haven't really watched it. Uh, so I didn't really get the reference, but anyway, that render made me so, so excited, uh, for The Sims 4. It's just what we needed to get pumped again, so it should be good. And I'm also excited, uh, you know, for a few gaming conventions coming up. Uh, E3, I, I won't be going to E3 because it's far, far away from me, uh, but I'm hoping for some good news about Sims 4 from there. I'm also going to be going to the PAX uh, here in Melbourne convention. It, it's quite a while away, but I'll be going to that. And I think to the EB Games Expo in Sydney probably as well. So that would be fun. Uh, I, I don't know. Are any of you guys going to, uh, going to either of those? Any of you Aussies or maybe, maybe some of you guys who live abroad will be coming to Aussie because it's the best place. Uh, <laughs> to see those conventions. Uh, this wall, uh, I'm not biased or anything. <laughs> uh, this wall here with the stone on it, that's a little bit different. That's going to be a shower wall. So there's going to be an out, like an outdoor shower behind that, which would be fun. And, uh, yeah, we're still, we're still going with the gray and wood kind of exterior here. I, Mm, I don't know. It was just not me enough. So we're going to we're going to change that a little bit in a second. I love this kind of bit where the stairs pop out of that kind of entrance tunnel there. I thought that was kind of cool. And yeah. Also this floor tile here where the stones are, I do change that because I kind of wanted the effect of the terrain paint tool. Uh, where it kind of looks like it's rocks in the ground or paving in the ground with rocks, but grass as well. But I'm so sick of using the same one. I wanted to create my own. So in a second, you'll see, you know, this right here, what I'm laying down right now is what I'm kind of sick of because I use it all the time. Uh, but we do change the other one to look kind of grassy because I changed one of the colors to green. And I don't know, let let me know what you think, but I think it works out quite nicely. I think it's something that I'll use again. Uh, and of course, there's my outdoor studio that's disconnected from the rest of the house, uh, which is fun. I like that. I, I really do. And I kind of... Uh, the side of the house that's closest to the studio, that uh, where those kind of like wall, <laughs> wall lines of wood, there's that wall line again, uh, I actually make them so they kind of go over in an L shape. So it looks like they're kind of reaching for the studio. Uh, I thought that was kind of an interesting way to visually, I guess, give the illusion of the main building of the house and the studio being somewhat connected. Because uh, sometimes when you build like a separate part of the house, it just looks like it's sitting in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so because they reach towards each other in the end, I don't know, I'll point it out to you guys, but I think it works a little bit better that way. Uh, in my humble opinion. <laughs> and oh, I really wanted to lower the top of the house, but in the end, 
you can see the window is sticking up there and it was just a crisis so uh, I unfortunately wasn't able to do that so it's a little bit taller to what I was hoping for and here we are just what I was talking about where extending those wall lines uh, to create those kind of pillar pillar things uh, or I guess wall supports there, so they kind of reach over towards the studio and create this really nice illusion of a walkway towards the pool area. So I thought that was quite nice. That is also the window of the main bedroom sitting there. So we also make a nice pond in a little while, which I thought was quite nice. <laughs> uh, here we are at the sunken kitchen. Uh, about to put some stairs in, I believe, and laying out some counters there to kind of get an idea of how it's going to work. Uh, but we don't use those counters because they are not my personal taste. Uh, so we get rid of them. Uh, <laughs> and go for something a little bit more modern and sleek in my opinion. But another constraint in, uh, in terms of The Sims 3 and what I would ideally have in real life is there's two other things that I am obsessed with. And that is I love gold. I love gold things. I love gold accents. And I know that's not everyone's thing, but I love, I don't know if it's a kind of antique looking gold or an aged gold. So it's not like literally shiny, 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 glossy gold. I love accents around the house that are goldy. So things like, I don't know, having, I guess, like a whole table that's kind of like a gold a uh, whole table. I think that would be really cool. I saw a gold kitchen bench once. That I know sounds disgusting, but it was so gorgeous because uh, it was kind of aged. Um, it was kind of like a frosted gold. I really liked that. Uh, so unfortunately, I can't. I know you can kind of get the illusion of gold, but it's not ideal. Uh, I do give it a good shot in this uh, in the interior half of this, but kind of fail at it to be honest. That's one thing I'd like. And the second thing I really, really, really wish The Sims 3 had is I love, love transparent furniture or acrylic furniture. So like clear furniture pieces. I love it because there's furniture there, but it doesn't take up room visually because you can see straight through it. Uh, so, it so it looks so clean and uncluttered. Uh, so I'm talking like cartel ghost chairs. They're my favorite ghost chairs. I mean, my favorite chairs ever. Um, around like a timber dining table. I love that idea. And I also love uh, Alexandra von Furstenberg, Diane von Furstenberg's daughter. Oh, I don't know. Mm, I can't remember what her relation is. She could be her daughter, that, that amazing fashion designer. Uh, but she, Alexandra, makes beautiful acrylic furniture, I think in LA or California at least. But yeah, I, I love her furniture. I would like that in my real house. <laughs> and she also puts kind of like fluorescent accents on the furniture, which I think is pretty dope, uh, in my opinion. And yeah, this is now, oh my goodness, I forgot that we were completely changing the exterior. You can see the white limestone there. We've gone for more, I guess, rustic looking wood, which I really love. It's a lot softer on the eyes. Uh, it's, it's a little bit more feminine as well. Uh, although at the same time, it is definitely masculine. And we're also changing these stark black windows. Even though I love that kind of Bauhaus feel, uh, I I wanted to make them kind of a rusted metal color. Uh, so we're about to kind of flip those windows around, which can be really, really annoying when you want to change colors of windows and then they're all different directions. <laughs> uh, but swapping them around. And the reason why I love old vintage like steel windows is because in my childhood home, uh, that my parents built. My dad actually pretty much built it. He did build it, I think, with his own two hands, uh, except we obviously got electricians and whatnot in. But he built it with recycled kind of steel windows or reused vintage windows. And they were really cool. I loved them and I missed them. Uh, the other thing I loved in my old house was my mum designed a beautiful staircase uh, that my parents had a very skilled uh, woodworker create and it was like this beautiful timber staircase with a glass balustrade and I just remember it being the prettiest thing ever and trying to slide down it uh, down the balustrade and being told off uh, because I would probably have killed myself when I was about uh, seven years old <laughs> but anyway 
uh, that that is my my good old memories from the good old days. Uh, that that nostalgia, gonna love it. <laughs> and yeah, finishing off some fencing here. We're actually getting to the end of the video here in a second. Uh, but of course, of course, we had to recolor the bin and the letterbox. If you guys ever see me do a build where I do not recolor the bin or the letterbox, I personally give you permission to troll me because. You have to change the letterbox in the bin. You just have to. And of course, I've gone for something really, really bright uh, because I would totally have a bright bin. That's just me. That's just Deli. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And I love those trees in a row from the Into the Future expansion pack. They had the best landscaping items ever. I love the landscaping. Uh, those orange flowers are from, they came with Sunlit Tides. I believe and also I'm putting in a lot, of, a lot of lavender bushes because again that is something that I remember from my childhood having lots of lavender and it reminds me of my great uh, grandmother too and who was a very very fashionable woman I will add <laughs> and yeah putting those in I also love the contrast of the purple to the chocolatey brown timber I really love that and uh, it's just a pretty color it's just pretty <laughs> uh, but yeah lots of landscaping lots of flowers because uh, flowers are pretty um, and lots of rocks around the main bedroom there. I also love mixing the different colored rocks as well. I don't see enough of that in builds, but I love having the orangey colored rock as well as the gray rock. I think that's pretty. And we're also about to make a lakey kind of watery <laughs> a lake water, aka pond here uh, for the main bedroom to look over as well. So I don't know, I enjoyed that and we're putting in some rocks and then we put in some fountain so it's all very pretty and zen looking uh, very relaxing <laughs> so that's that's nice uh but yeah the other thing i forgot to mention is this build is kind of the dream house currently this is what i would dream to live in right now uh, or in the next few years i haven't incorporated like kids bedrooms and stuff like that because that's kind of looking a little bit too far into the future and it freaks me out a little bit to be honest uh, by the way, if I had this house right now, that would be absolutely ridiculous at my age, but pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> actually, that'd be so amazing. Uh, I want a house. I really do. Uh, gotta, gotta get a job first. That, that's the first thing on the agenda. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I think the landscaping looks nice. I also have some fun putting fairy lights into the trees in the next part. I also put some hanging chairs from the trees too. Uh, so it does look really pretty in the end. Be sure to check out the next part. I'll post it really soon, uh, unless you're watching this at a later date. There will be a link in the description down below so you can see the fun that we have with the interior. Because, uh, I don't know, I like it. I'm really happy with how it turned out the second time round. Because <laughs> I did the interior kind of one and a half times. Uh, but yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun. It's going to be fun. Uh, but yeah, getting to the end of the video now, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you have a really, really good week or end of the week or start of the week, whatever, whatever point of time you're watching this and uh, happy simming. Please tell me what you want in your dream houses in the comments down below. I am genuinely really, really interested to hear that, especially say what country you're from as well, because it'd be interesting to see that. But anyway, guys, hope you're having a lovely morning. Afternoon or evening, wherever you are, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!